So uh, we've been requested to do some experiments in a lecture. It's a bowl full of very up. You've quick. got for that. So well, come on, get to work. Uh, anyway. so, so now we're going to gate crash Martin and hijack his lecture. Well, last week I heard that a friend of mine, John Salthouse, who's quite a famous demonstration lecturer from a neighbouring university in Manchester, uh, had died. And so today I decided to dedicate the last 10 minutes of my undergraduate lecture to him. And John was very famous for doing demonstration lectures. I invited Pete and Neil to come into my lecture and to try out some of John's favourite experiments so that my students could actually see what he'd done. So what I thought we'd do today is to show you one of John's favourite experiments. OK, and that's actually to set fire to some ether <laughs> in a controlled way on the bench in front of the lecture theatre. So this is our, our ether trough. And this is a small amount of diethyl ether. I'll pour it in here. And it'll slowly roll down there and make a volatile atmosphere and then hopefully we'll see just how flammable this, this compound itself is. So here we go. So there's my ether. Whoa. So you can see that, <laughs> well, <laughs> a small amount of ether and there was just literally 10 millilitres is enough to track all the way across the bench. And it's actually still on fire inside this trough and actually caught fire from this. <laughs> Whoa. There's the gas tap. So, <laughs> so John was um, a chemist that I've known for more than 40 years and he had a famous lecture called Sans et Lumière, Sound and Light, which he demonstrated all sorts of explosions. So here I have a, a torch and this torch allows me to make a very, very nice mixture of gas and oxygen to burn with a very, very hot flame. So I'm just going to light the fuel, which is the, the methane gas from the, from the gas tap. And we'll see if we can light our flame. OK, so perhaps if you put the lights off, Martin, you can all see that that's a really quite orange flame. It's a bit like the orange flame of the Bunsen burner. It's not particularly hot. It's not particularly exciting. So what I thought we'd do now is we'd mix in a little bit of oxygen and see what happens. So what we're doing is opening the, the tap or the, the hole at the bottom of the chimney on a Bunsen burner. And I think you can see that you get quite a significant roaring blue flame. Some of you may have saw Neil was making a bowl full of bubbly liquid here. So I think what would be really cool is just to see if we can blow some bubbles. So we're now blowing some bubbles very slowly because the gas flow is very slow from the gas. Perhaps we can have the lights off, Martin. <laughs> Let's see what happens when you contain the gas by some fairy liquid. Oh, quite a nice little reaction. So John had a whole series of experiments, most of which I would be too frightened to um, demonstrate myself. I showed the students a picture of him burning a biscuit in liquid oxygen. He dunked the biscuit in liquid oxygen, just like people dunk it in their coffee, and then set fire to it and a flame this long came out. But what was important in his lecture and was that he didn't just do the demonstrations, but they had some point to them. He was demonstrating a point how you had to be careful with inflammable solvents or how you had to make sure that gases if they were explosive, were not tightly contained. And I think the whole chemistry community is very sad by his death because he did a huge service to making chemistry more exciting for everybody, not just for young people and children, but also for old chemists like me. Uh, 